The Lions haven't made the postseason since 2016 and haven't won a playoff game since 1991. Detroit has been on a 30-year rebuild and has destroyed countless Hall of Fame careers in the process. But slowly, there are more and more reasons to have some optimism for the squad. The Lions still have a ways to go before becoming a true contender, but at the very least, Detroit is on the right path. But first, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor. Take it away, Jackson. But first, thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. I love my Raycon earbuds. Personally, I work out every single day and they come really in handy whenever I'm working out at the gym or just wanna listen to music on my own time. They're sweat and water resistant. So when I'm going really hard at the gym, they can handle it. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They offer eight hours of playtime and have a 32 hour battery life. Plus Raycon's are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price as the other premium brands. Personally, I think the flare red color looks really, really cool, and that's my favorite, but there's plenty of other options like the carbon black or the electric blue. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash jdproductions to get 15% off your order and help support the channel. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring, and let's get right back to the video. There aren't really a lot of eyes on the Lions, and that's probably because they're there aren't a lot of sexy names at the quarterback position. Even bad football teams have everyone watching them because they'll probably draft some young quarterbacks who probably won't pan out, but the Lions haven't really done that. Matthew Stafford was in Detroit for 12 years and was damn good, but he never got the recognition that he deserved because, well, it was the Lions. Of course, now Stafford is a Super Bowl champion and regarded as an elite quarterback after only one season in Los Angeles. In the trade that sent Stafford to the Rams, the Lions got two firsts, a third, and Jared Goff. Let me remind you that Goff was once the first overall pick back in 2016, and now he wasn't very good at first, but then Sean McVay turned him into a viable quarterback option, and the Rams even played in a Super Bowl. Like, he was good at times, but there were definitely some rough patches. Last season in Detroit, Goff had 3,245 yards and 19 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. He was wasn't great, but that wasn't necessarily a bad season either. The Lions just don't have any excitement at quarterback. Behind Goff is Nate Sudfeld, and there isn't much there, but that's probably a good thing. A young quarterback needs to be put in the right position to develop, and the Lions knew that they had to build up the roster first, and that's exactly what Detroit has done in the past few years at the draft. The Lions made two really good selections at the draft this past offseason, and they should really help the franchise for years to come. Detroit had the second over overall pick and had the chance to grab probably the guy they wanted anyways who was for the most part expected to go first overall, Aiden Hutchinson, aka Mr. Michigan. The Hutchinson family sure is something. Aiden Hutchinson's dad, Chris Hutchinson, played at Michigan and in 1992, he was a first team All-American and a Big Ten Defensive Lineman of the Year. He went undrafted in 1993 and signed with the Browns but developed complications from a tetanus shot and retired. Plus, Aiden Hutchinson's mom was Miss Michigan Teen USA in 1988, and his sister was Miss Michigan USA in 2022. Aiden Hutchinson was born and raised in Michigan. He went to Divine Child High School and was rated a four-star recruit and the best player in the state before he committed to play at Michigan. He played in every game as a true freshman, recording 15 tackles. In 2019, he became a starter for the Wolverines and went on to be named third team All Big Ten after he had four and a half sacks in 68 tackles. In that 2020 COVID year, Hutchinson only played in three games. He had 13 tackles before he unfortunately suffered an ankle fracture. He returned for his senior year in 2021, and yeah, Hutchinson was an absolute force. He had 14 sacks, a school record, plus 55 tackles. He was an All-American, won a crap ton of awards, and was even the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy. After the Lions drafted Hutchinson, Detroit actually traded up to select Jamison Williams. Williams was a four-star recruit and the best player in Missouri before committing to Ohio State. Williams was always 
buried on the depth chart at OSU. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba were in the way. Williams had just over 100 yards and a single touchdown as a freshman, and then in 2020, had 154 yards and two touchdowns. He decided to transfer out to Alabama, and it paid off massively. Not only did he start for the Crimson Tide, but he was incredible. He recorded almost 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was an All-American and was even the SEC Co-Special Teams Player of the Year for his work in the return game. Williams was amazing, but unfortunately, in the national championship, he tore his ACL. That certainly hurt his draft stock, but he still ended up going to the Lions at 12th overall. Jameson is going to start the year on the non-football injury list because of that injury he sustained in college, which is going to hold him out for at least the first four games of the season. Also, he's actually wearing number nine, which is pretty interesting because that was the same number that Matthew Stafford had. But Jameson reportedly asked Stafford if he could, which was a cool gesture. Even in 2021, the Lions had a really good draft. Of course, that's easier to do when you have a high pick and you can take one of the top guys off the board like Penn Sewell. Sewell was taken 7th overall in 2021. He ended up sitting out of minicamp after he tested positive for COVID, but that didn't stop him from having a great rookie season, playing in 16 games and being named to the PFWA All-Rookie Team. Sewell was the easy pick, but the Lions just might have found themselves a diamond in the rough on day 3 of the draft in Amon Ross St. Brown. If his name sounds familiar, it's because his brother Equinamius St. Brown actually plays for the Bears after he spent four seasons with the Packers. Amon Ra was selected by Detroit in the fourth round in 2021, and he ended up playing in every game, starting nine of them. He had a very promising rookie year, and really came on late in the season. Amon Ra was the Offensive Rookie of the Month in December after he had 340 yards and three touchdowns. Overall, as a rookie, Amon Ra recorded 912 yards and five touchdowns. Amon Ra is going to be the number one in Detroit for sure, and while the Lions are going to be waiting for Jameson Williams to get back to full health, they also signed DJ Chark, who could make an impact on the team. Behind some solid young wideouts, the Lions do have a stud tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Detroit selected Hawkinson eighth overall at the 2019 draft, and he got off to a really hot start. In his NFL debut, he had 131 yards, an NFL tight end debut record. Unfortunately, he did miss four games on the season and spent time on injured reserve. He had 367 yards and two touchdowns. Hawkinson was a bright spot on a bad Lions team in 2020. He was a pro bowler and caught a touchdown from Matthew Stafford as time expired to beat the Falcons in week seven. Hawkinson played in every game and had over 700 yards and six touchdowns. Last season, Hawkinson played in 12 games before he had to have thumb surgery. In 12 games, Games, Hawkinson recorded about 600 yards and four touchdowns. Hawkinson has already proven himself, and so is the guy that he'll be blocking for all season, DeAndre Swift. Swift was an early second rounder in 2020. As a rookie, he was stuck in a crowded backfield with Adrian Peterson and Kerryon Johnson. Unfortunately, Swift's most memorable moment on the season was him dropping what would have been a game-winning touchdown in the final seconds against the Bears. Overall though, Swift had an impressive rookie campaign, 521 yards and eight touchdowns rushing, plus 357 yards and two touchdowns to the air. 2021 was less of a committee approach in Detroit, but Swift still did split carries with Jamal Williams. Swift impressed both on the ground and in the passing game. He had over 600 yards and five touchdowns rushing, along with 450 yards and two touchdowns receiving. There is clear talent in Detroit. It's young and it needs to develop, but it's definitely there. And it's going to be up to Dan Campbell to put it all together. Campbell played tight end at Texas A&M before being selected in the third round in 1999 by the Giants. He went on to play for the Cowboys, Lions, and kind of the Saints. He didn't play a single game after getting hurt in training camp, and New Orleans didn't even give him a ring after winning the Super Bowl. And that was the end of Campbell's pro career. He had less than 1,000 
1,000 yards and just 11 touchdowns in an 11 year career. The Dolphins hired him as a coaching intern in 2010 and he became the tight ends coach the following season. In 2015, Campbell served as the interim head coach after Joe Philbin was fired. Miami went 5 and 7 with Campbell at the helm and in 2016, Campbell was hired to be the Saints assistant head coach and tight ends coach under Sean Payton, who Campbell played for in Dallas and New Orleans. In 2021, Detroit hired him to be their new head coach. In his first year with the team, the Lions went 3-13-1. That was only year one for Campbell. The Lions have a long road ahead to relevancy, and there are still plenty of questions on the roster, like at quarterback. But with youngsters like Aiden Hutchinson, Jamison Williams, Panay Sewell, and Amon Ross St. Brown, the Lions have the right players in the building to be a solid team and continue to improve.